Welcome to Business Connection. I'm Liz Spencer. We have a wonderful guest in studio today. It's Joseph J. Bogdan from the law offices of Joseph J. Bogdan. Jay, that's what they call you. Right. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Now you have a little bit of a, of a interesting background, a combination of a pharmacist and a lawyer. Tell me how that all came about. I went to the University of Illinois at Chicago, uh, received what's called a PharmD degree. It's a six-year degree. Um, upon graduating from there, I worked in pharmaceutical sales for probably about 14 years. Okay. But during that time, went to law school at night and uh, graduated from John Marshall Law School and uh, went to John Marshall for approximately five and a half years, was admitted to the bar in Illinois. And uh, shortly after that period of time, I started working with the Department of Financial and Professional Regulations. Now you, now you have your own firm. Correct. And how does, how does that combination um, help you, um, and, and what kind of practices and what kind of cases and, and, and clients are you looking for now? Well, that's a good question. My, um, the pharmacy degree, well, first off, let's start out with the type of clients that I, yeah. I have in my practice that I work with. Most of my practice is healthcare professionals or owners of healthcare related businesses, pharmacy, uh, surgery centers, things like that, mm -hmm. uh, or physicians, nurse practitioners, um, physician assistants, pharmacists, a whole gamut of healthcare practitioners. The majority of my practice is I represent people to the, the Board of Medicine, Board of Pharmacy, various boards that would regulate that profession in states, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, I also do some stuff with the DEA when it comes to prescribers involved or pharmacies involved with DEA cases. Uh, we also work on audits, Medicare audits, insurance audits that can be you know, taken place in the pharmacy or maybe a healthcare professional practice. What happens with my degree, what's the benefit is that I can pick things up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And I can represent people, for example, I just had someone in yesterday and um, we were talking about his case, it was an FDA case. and. I said, you need to explain to me, and I pick it up quicker. The two of us talked about it, and I'll be able to represent him in a way maybe compared to others might be a little different. You know, I can really explain to the prosecuting attorneys as to, to what happened and how it worked out, whether I, you know, draw up a schematic and explain it to them, or I can able to go ahead and present it verbally to them so they get a better understanding. Because a lot of these prosecutors, as a former prosecutor with professional regs, you've got 20 cases you handle in a day, or 15. There's, it's hard to get up to speed on this stuff, unless you have that type of a background and the time to dedicate to those cases. So I think from that standpoint, the combination degree helps me represent them better from that mm -hmm. standpoint. Um, also when it comes to like audits, like I was telling you about before, I'm able to help people figure out the audits. We learn more, you know, I learn more about processing claims for insurance payments. Um, I also, on a side note, get involved with Medicaid, Medicare cases. Um, there's cases called the Office of Inspector General cases, which are part of a Medicare, Medicaid. They're you know the federal government that oversees providers for Medicare and Medicaid for those types of patients. So you're primarily working with the business aspect of this, as opposed to an individual, or it could be an individual pharmacy tech or doctor. I'd say the majority is the latter, individual. Okay. I'm more okay. primarily I represent individuals, okay. physicians, pharmacists, nurses. Um, like I said, PAs, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, certified registered nurse assistant, anesthetist, and then a certain percentage, different percentage, I say smaller percentage, represent businesses. Right. I would think that this is a growing field as our, our health care providers and our health care industry is growing. I would agree with you uh, totally. Um, health care is being regulated extensively. Mm-hmm. It's being regulated not only by, you have the federal government that regulates Medicare, Medicaid. You also have state that regulates Medicaid. And then you have these insurance companies, because a lot of these Medicare Part B plans mm -hmm. that are pharmacy plans, uh, Medicaid, they're all managed care, they call that. In other words, what they'll do is they'll assign that responsibility to an insurance company to say, take care of my prescriptions, make sure it's filled and all that properly, whatever. That insurance company is also scrutinized. They have to adhere because the government's overlooking them. So they have to make sure that that's done properly. So to your point about this is a growing field, I believe it is. I think because not only is the insurance companies getting actively involved because they have to, then you have Medicare, Medicaid. 
medical professionals, whether they be a pharmacist or a physician assistant, or that I, I often think that they don't understand necessarily how complicated it is, and and sometimes find themselves in difficulty without even realizing they're there. And that's where somebody like you can come in. That's an excellent point. I, I tell people, my clients that come to my office and talk to me, I would say 70, 80 percent of them don't even realize what happened. So you're sure. exactly right. Uh, is it their fault? I don't know. Um, is there a way to prevent it? Obviously, to learn to, you know, I'm happy to help people. I talk to a lot of people every day mm -hmm. about giving my insight to if they have questions or whatever. Um, but like with medicine, physicians in particular, they don't have a law that I know of at most of these medical schools, a law school, a law class, or even a lecture on law, how to prescribe proper controlled substances, how to look for refills, how to regulate whether or not the patient's taking the, the medication, all kinds of things that could be helpful. Um, and the same with pharmacy. Like I told before, pharmacy has its own pharmacy law class. They have to teach, uh, they have to take during the curriculum. But even then, they, you know, they still, a lot of times, they don't realize what they did. Well, it's only one course, too. They're not a lawyer. Exactly. Exactly right. They're worried about, you know, they're not worried, but they're focused on treating me, the patient. And that's the way it should be. Unfortunately, they get caught up in other things that they don't even realize is happening. So when somebody comes to your office with this problem, problem what's your, your, your next couple of steps? Depending on the situation and what it is, obviously I talk to them, I have a consultation with them, kind of tell them my thoughts, where we're going. Sometimes it's either they're coming in for a visit to get a consultation or have a consultation or they're, hey, I need help right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got this agency in my office right now, what do I do? Or they just stopped by yesterday, help me out. Um, or I have this audit, the insurance company has contacted mm -hmm. me. So what I'll do at that point is, okay, we'll figure out obviously a strategy, how we want to approach this. Uh, what do I think we need to do to put that person, hopefully have success in the case and the outcomes. Um, but, you know, it varies from what's going on. I mean, you could have a federal case, you could have a state case, you could have a case with the insurance companies, things like that. Jay, you also uh, teach at the college level and, and share your knowledge. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I teach, um, well, let's back up. I teach pharmacy law at uh, di three different colleges of pharmacy in the area. Pharmacy is a profession or a curriculum that has, you have to take two exams when you graduate to be a licensed pharmacist in Illinois or any state. You take what's called the NAPLEX, which is an exam that looks at the um, uh, pharmaceuticals, calculations that you learn, all this other stuff, pharmacokinetics that's involved throughout the four years that you're in school. And then one of the courses, the, one of the exams, the other exam they have to take is a law exam. And it's the only profession that I know of pharmacy where they have this law exam. So in other words, to be a licensed pharmacist in Illinois, you have to pass two exams, get 75% or better in Illinois. And if you don't get 75%, obviously you don't pass. So you could pass one exam but not the other, and you're not going to be licensed. You have to pass both, and that's mostly in every state in this country is like that. So it's, you go in and give them a little practical experience. Right, right. I give them examples. You know, being a, a former prosecutor and now working on the other side, I have a lot of cases that... I can refer to to help them apply the law that we're talking about. Within the course, we have to teach federal law and you have to teach state law. Pharmacists, when they sit for this exam, this law exam, they have to, or pharmacy students at the time, they have to apply both laws to the situation. And so you have to go through both of those. That's awesome. Well, Jay, thanks for stopping by and sharing a little bit about what you do. This is an interesting side of law and one that I think is in a really growing field of healthcare. So thank you so much. We're going to be right back with more Business Connection. Stay tuned.